Today's mission has taken me to a part of the moors I don't visit very much, the bustling honeypot of Haytor Vale and Hound Tor. Saying Haytor is your favourite tour would be a bit like saying the Beatles are your favourite band. A bit obvious. But it is popular for a reason, I suppose. And seeing Haytor rocks for the first time in ages was really quite impressive. I mean, look at it blazing away on the horizon there in defiance of the wind. But fear not, you lovers of the niche and obscure. The reason I'm in the vicinity of such a passé lump of granite is that I'm looking for a feature that's recherché even by my standards. The cursed voodoo death skull of Black Hill Down. Yeah, I might have gone a bit overboard with the name, actually. Welcome back to the Dartmoor Podcast. This little adventure was kicked off by a tweet from a chap called Chris Sumner, who noticed this rather sinister visage in the corner of one of his photos. So, on a bright but blustery January day, I set off over Black Hill towards the scattered rocks just to the north of Haytor Vale, a cluster of boulders known as Smallercum Rocks, an intriguing little wind-scoured outcrop full of nooks and caves. Despite Chris sending me some excellent directions, I approached the place from the wrong direction, so it took me ages to find what I was looking for. But in the process, found plenty of other strange and interesting formations carved by the elements. When I did eventually find it, I have to say it wasn't quite as obvious as it was in Chris's photo. I think he must have caught the light and the angle just perfectly to highlight the creepy looking face. Still, mission accomplished. Nothing scary or supernatural here, just a vaguely sinister looking rock that needed a boop on the nose. The cursed voodoo death skull has, rather spookily, fixed its demonic stare out towards the abandoned village of Hunter Tora, the remains of a medieval settlement which lies below the craggy parapets of Houndtor. And with a few hours of daylight left, I decided to go and have an explore. Now, the D to the N to the P to the A made a very interesting and professional video, with reconstructions and everything, about its excavation by a rather wonderful and eccentric sounding woman named Mary Minter in the 60s. So although fascinating, that's well-trodden ground that I'll avoid here. Hundertora was built on the site of a much older Bronze Age settlement, situated as it is on a reasonably sheltered hillside where it's protected from the prevailing winds by the granite shield of Grey Tor Rocks to the south and Houndtor itself to the west. These are some excellent examples of medieval longhouses, probably built in the early 1200s. These structures would have had high walls and thatched roofs and housed both a family and their cattle, a rather smelly living arrangement that meant it was actually desirable to build your house on a slope so that the cow piddle would flow down and away from your sleeping quarters. Archaeologists have shown that these people were thriving here, and samples show that they were growing crops as well as farming livestock. And I've realised that my voice has started doing that history documentary thing, where every sentence goes up to a peak, then descends to a dramatic conclusion. Before you know it, I'll be walking towards you while gesticulating along with my hands, and now I've walked past you. Anyway, the thing that makes Hunter Tora especially interesting, in my opinion, is its abandonment. How did a flourishing farming community end up as this smattering of overgrown oblongs? Well, there are two theories, 
and both of them are strangely relevant to events today. The first is to do with climate change. You see, the Earth's temperature has always fluctuated over time, and the period between 950 and 1250 was a particularly warm one for the Northern Hemisphere, something scientists call the Medieval Warm Period, or, if they're exceptionally cool, the MWP. This would have made Dartmoor a perfectly viable place to grow arable crops like oats and rye. And some of these smaller structures aren't long houses, but barns where the crops would be stored. There are even the remains of stone ovens used for drying the grains. But in the 1300s, the climate began to change for the worse. The weather got a bit more, well, dartmoor -y. Temperatures cooled, and the years between 1315 and 1317 in particular had so much rainfall that there were severe harvest failures and famines over much of Europe. Historians believe that over the next century, the inhabitants of Hundertora abandoned their failing farmsteads and migrated to more clement, lower-lying settlements. And here's our first link to the modern day. All civilization as we know it rose up in the last 12,000 years, a geological period known as the Holocene. This was a relatively stable and temperate period in the Earth's history compared to the freezing ice ages or the tropical times of the dinosaurs. But now, scientists argue, we are leaving the Holocene and entering the Anthropocene. Temperatures have always fluctuated and mankind has always left his mark on the planet. But this is the first time in history that mankind is actually affecting the state of the Earth more than natural processes are. We alter the course of rivers, we dig up the ground, deforest the landscape and, of course, burn fossil fuels, leading to an increase in the greenhouse effect, which is causing rapid temperature rises and unpredictable and severe weather events. Predicted side effects of this will be the melting of the ice caps, rising sea levels and mass migrations of people fleeing whichever parts of the planet to become uninhabitable. As if climate change wasn't enough for the inhabitants of Hunter Torah, in 1348 the Black Death rolled into town. Now, the plague isn't something I'd thought about since I'd learnt about it in primary school, where it was a rather unfathomable idea for my young mind. Something about rats and fleas and buboes and ring a ring a rosy. Now though, in 2023, we've all lived through a pandemic. And thinking about a terrifying disease without a cure arriving from the East is a rather less abstract concept. Thanks to our scientific understanding of how viruses work, Covid killed far less than 1% of the UK population, and overwhelmingly those affected were the elderly and vulnerable. Try and imagine something that killed 50% of the population, and killed indiscriminately as the Black Death did. Picture the panic and distress. Then add to that the confusion caused by ignorance of what such an illness was. Of course, it was widely believed to be a punishment from God. In the end, it was probably a combination of climate change and a pandemic that led to the abandonment of Hunter Torah in the 14th century. Who knows what the future holds for all of us? Are we all just Hunter Torah, living under the gaze of our own cursed voodoo death skull as we head into 2023? Typical, right? I ended 2022 with episode 12 and a message of hope, and here I am in episode 13, fittingly, kicking off the new year with prophecies of doom. Thanks for watching everyone. I've got some really great episodes lined up for this year, so hopefully I can squeeze some in before the apocalypse. See you next time.